This is Rob from Black Label Miniatures. This week we're doing Tech Preset Manipulas from Games Workshop's 40k. After cleaning and assembling our miniature, giving the base a little bit of texture, we'll give him an undercoat of black using Steinol Res Airbrush Primer. This paint is pretty thin and flows great off the airbrush. Just remember to take your time and not flood the mini though. I decided to go ahead and highlight a couple areas before starting by mixing some white into my black primer. I basically went over all the areas that uh, that will not be done in a metallic. So after giving the primer a few minutes to set, I'll start on the robes and the hat using a Vallejo monocolor flat red. This is a great mid-tone and serves well as a base for all the areas that will be done in red. As always, remember to thin your paints down a little with water or your favorite thinner medium on either a wet or a dry palette. I decided to do this miniature a little different and the shade areas at different times basically as I'm going through my painting process. For the hat and the robes I'm going to use a Citadel uh, Agrex Earthshade thinned down with a 2 to 1 ratio with some hold main thinning medium. Remember not to let this pull up anywhere as it can create some real annoying staining that can be impossible to cover later on. After some hair drying action to speed up the drying time, I'll come back with the Vallejo Game Color Bloody Red and highlight all the raised sections of the robes and the hat. To get nice coverage and brilliant red, remember to do about three thin coats instead of one heavy and leave all the recesses in the shade color. With that bloody red still on the wet palette, uh, let's go ahead and mix in a drop or two of Vallejo Game Color Elf Skin Tone to brighten the red a little bit. Alternatively, if you have it, you could use a straight Vallejo Model Air Light Red for this step. Remember to not mix too much Elf Tone into this, just a couple drops to highlight the red. Looking at the uh, box art for the skin color, I was not 100% sure if these guys are supposed to look like they're dead or not. And the closest thing I could find to use was a Vallejo model color green gray, which gives the skin a nice necrotic pale flesh look. I'll use this on the one visible foot and his left arm as the right appears to be a mech upgrade. Thinned Dragonhoff Nightshade for the skin, this time about 3 to 1 Nightshade to thinner. Again, do not let this pull up in any areas, and if it does, just rinse your brush off, touch it to your towel, then wipe off any excess shade you can find. I felt like the shade was a little too dark for me in a couple spots, so I went ahead and grabbed the green gray again and I'll clean up the spots I do not like. Then using a Vallejo Model Air Duck Egg Green, come back and give those areas a couple light highlights and the skin is good to go. I relish any reason to pull out Duck Egg Green as this stuff has been sitting around forever and hardly gets used in my painting processes. Now 
Now with Black Metal by Skull Color, I'll cover all the areas that are meant to be silver. Do not be afraid to get this on the copper areas as that color is darker and will cover without too much issue. So this will pretty much cover a vast majority of the upper torso section of the body, the entire uh, hand cannon weapon, and the top section of the staff weapon. If your metallics need thinning, it is best to use a thinner and not water. You may also want to consider adding a little bit of drying retardant to help keep the paint a little more fluid. For all these silver areas, use a shade similar to Nolan Oil, which I thin down one to one just to help it flow better off my brush. Now while I let that dry for a few minutes, I'll go ahead and start on the armor areas that require the copper using hammered copper from the Vallejo Game Color line. This is not a deep copper and as such you should not have to shade it. For lighter colors or if you just wanted to, you could add some Rikian Flesh Shade to it. I'll add this color to the head of the pistol weapon, the rounded section of the staff, the beaker on his shoulder, the grippy things on his stomach, as well as the base of all the light bulb looking parts. Skip the banding of his armor for now as we still need to highlight the steel and it would just cause us to reapply the copper. When the wash is dry, let's grab some thrash metal from the scale color paint line. Now when dry brushing, you do not want a completely dry brush, but actually one that is just a tad damp. For the best results, you'll need a moist paper towel. Touch the tip of your brush to the towel, then adding a tiny bit of paint and working into the hair of the brush. Now after ensuring that you have just the right amount of paint you're looking for, proceed to swipe or stab the brush where needed on the miniature. For a higher highlight to all these metal areas, I grabbed some heavy metal from the scale color line and repeated the exact same processes as before. After completing the still highlights, it's time to move on to the edge banding and the rivets. I wanted this to be brighter than the other sections, so I'm going to be using a brassy brass from the Vallejo Game Color line. Remember to take your time and do your best not to spill on any of the steel sections we just completed. The cauldron on the mini shoulder is going to be based in heavy black green from Vallejo's extra opaque line. Remember that these paints tend to be a little thicker and really need to be thinned down for smoother coverage. Color both the beaker and the offspout in the same color.
Now we're going to grab a medium bright green, such as the Vallejo Game Colors Sick Green, and cover the bottom part of the top half of the beaker. For the best results, you should really attempt to wet blend these two areas together. You'll also highlight the outside loop sections of the offspout in this same color. Using Escorpina Green, we'll add this to the area just above the copper holder and do our best to wet blend it into the sick green. We're going to also use this to give the, the offspout curl a final edge highlight. For all those little light bulb looking things on the model, if these items are still black, take this time to give them a quick cover in a light gray. It'll make your job easier. Now we're going to use a nice thin medium blue cover to cover all the bulbs. When done properly, it should give off a natural highlight on the tips. There are three on the staff and about five more on the arm weapon. To highlight, take a brush tip of the Escorpina green and mix it into the blue. Since green has yellow in its base, this will actually help to brighten the blue and not desaturate it. Finally, I'm going to add a brush tip of green gray to the previous mixture for a quick extreme highlight to all the tips of the bulbs. I will also take the medium blue, some escorpina green, and flat red to color the various tubes and or hoses on the miniature. For the cuff of the robes and those two stitches on his hoods, I used some heavy blue gray for a base coat, then added in a little bit of white in stages to highlight the upper areas of the sleeves. Here we are, Tech Priest Manipulus from Games Workshops, a Warhammer 40k. Uh, being a big fan of Cyberpunk, I really enjoy these characters that look as they incorporate tech into their bodies. My biggest issue is all the bits and bobs that are like magnets for my fingers when trying to paint. Manipulus is a pretty dangerous looking dude and is just in dire need of some sunlight. If you enjoy the content I'm creating, please consider contributing to my channel via Patreon or the PayPal links below. Also, remember to like, subscribe, and share to help my channel continue to grow. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And remember, if nothing else, paint something.